what we've seen up until this point is that there's been a ton of entertainment content, games, you know, 360 video experiences, movie trailers, things like that. Um, but, you know, that type of behavior, that means that you're going home and watching something for an hour at night and, uh, and then, you know, you're taking your headset off and, and that's kind of it. When we get to a point where we're doing, you know, like, just like we use computer monitors or just like we use our cell phones where we're running around all day, every day and looking for, you know, different, we're doing different things in VR uh, that aren't related to necessarily entertainment, but it's kind of woven into our everyday lives. I think going back and looking at some of the trends that we were seeing and how virtual reality was being used in all these different ways, it wasn't just for gaming anymore. It was having more mainstream uses. It just gave us the confidence that like now was the right time. And that even if mom hadn't heard of it, it's a pretty good chance that her kids had. You know, this is the YouTube generation, as they say. Right. So I think that they're already, they're, they consume content differently. And quite candidly, when you make content for the digital space, you make it differently. You don't even make all digital content the same way. What you make for YouTube is different than what you would make for Facebook, is different than what you would make for AOL or any of these big portals. So you make content differently for every single platform that's out there, and that's what the consumer is accustomed to. VR is the natural extension of that. It's not people even at just at home, but there could be an elevated experience for people in the audience at a live performance. I don't think VR will ever re replace live because live is just such a mag magical experience. But if you think about, is there a show within the show that you were able to watch if you, um, if something fantastical happened? Like if you can imagine Coldplay, I don't know if anybody went to the recent tour, but there's all these things happening and magical moments. And if there was a VR experience even where you're there, um, where things are unveiling themselves that you couldn't see without the headset. Um, I think that's really, really cool. So I think there's, it, this is just the early days of VR, but something that we definitely want to be in partnership with Live Nation on as they kind of plow through what that looks like at home, but also in the live experience, live live. So. Some of the most profound and powerful VR experiences are the ones where we map the physical world with a virtual world. So for example, when you were in the Game of Thrones experience and you stepped into the elevator as you ascend the wall, the, the, rumble, the floor rumbles beneath you. When you reach the top, it, everything is choreographed and there's wind blowing in your face. Those real world elements mapped to the virtual experience heighten the experience to a completely different level. And that, that helps in creating the kind of the golden chalice of VR, which is presence. If somebody is in the virtual world and a virtual ball is flying at them, they feel so present in that moment that the reality is gone, that they will physically duck. And that's a great way to sense whether what you are doing and what you are experiencing is good VR. Where it is now with these headsets, nobody wants to walk around wearing a headset. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not the coolest thing in the world, but it's, it, this is the cell phone brick. It's that first Nokia or whoever made it. Now pick up your iPhone 7 if you were lucky enough to get one. Um, and imagine how far that's come in the last 20 years. Imagine the iPhone 1 to iPhone 7, you know, or, or any of the cell phone like uh, evolution. I think that that's how quickly it's going to evolve. I think that in the initial stages, anyone that's doing original content for VR, which is what this guy is heading up, uh, I think you're gonna ha you're gonna have to l learn and evolve with the camera and evolve with the technology. There will probably be a day where, and I don't know that I want to watch this, but where CNN is live on the scene in Kandahar or Aleppo, and they're like, put on your VR headset to see an atrocity. I mean, you know who knows.